Hi everybody and welcome to Anthro Events and a very Merry Christmas. My name's Jotty and I work in the PR and events team for Anthropology Europe. We're really excited today to be joined by Ellie, the talented resident potter from Sculpt. Ellie is going to be guiding us through a Christmas pottery class and we'll be sharing links and details that you might need after the event, along with the link to the Vimeo page where the event recording will be uploaded. If you have any questions, just use the chat function to send a message and we'll answer them throughout. And if you'd like to share anything from today, we would love to hear from you. You can tag us using at Anthropology EU and use the hashtag Anthro Events. We hope you have fun. And now I'll pass it over to Ellie to get things started. Thank you, Jodi. Hi, everybody. It's really nice to meet you all. My name is Ellie. I'm from Sculpt. Um, today we're going to be taking you all through some Christmas decoration tutorials. So we're going to be making a rounded bauble for your Christmas tree and also a flat bauble. Um, the flat bauble will be making a few different patterns, a few different designs, um, but ultimately it's up to you guys um, to choose like whatever comes to mind, use your creativity, uh, be inspired because obviously it's Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to be teaching you the basic techniques for uh, these baubles. Okay, so to start off with, I'm just going to give you guys a really quick run through um, about the clay and how it works, because it might be a little bit different to clay that you have used before, potentially maybe at school or if you've done a pottery lesson. So the clay that you guys have in your kits is air dry clay. This means that all it needs to dry out solid is literally just contact with the air, which sounds kind of silly, but um, as long as it's not wrapped up in a bag or something like that, it will take about two to three days to dry out solid. Um, this will vary depending on how thick your pieces are and how much water you've incorporated. Maybe if you want to smooth them down, you might use quite a lot of water for that. So yeah, so you just want to look out for between two to three days and then that's when your pieces will be fully dry. Um, I have got a few dry pieces here just so I can show you guys what they'll look like. So they're going to go quite a bit paler, <laughs> quite a bit paler. So they'll almost be white and they're a bit chalky to the touch that's when you guys know that they're ready to be painted. Um, so if you guys have a look in your kits, you'll see that you have some white paint and some sealant. Um, once your pieces are all finished and they're completely dry, that's when you can go ahead and paint them with the white paint. And also if you have any other acrylic paints at home, they work really, really well. Um, some other ideas for decorating, you guys can draw on them with marker pens, which gives a really nice, clean, crisp finish. Um, you can glue things to them, you know, it's Christmas, so you can go foraging, find some nice things outside, for example, um, stick them on, anything that you can think of. Then once all the painting and decorating is done, that's when you guys can go ahead and use the sealant in your kits, which is kind of like a varnish layer, final layer, just to make sure they're nice and they're waterproofed and yeah, ready for you to hang on your tree. Um, the sealant looks white in the little tub, but it dries completely transparent and it's really nice and glossy. Okay, so one other thing, if you guys do decide to make um, pieces that are gonna have a lot of contact with water. So for example, if you wanted to make a plant pot or a vase um, or maybe some mugs with your leftover clay, then I really do recommend getting them fired in a kiln. Um, there's extra instructions on the back of the packet for that, but I think it's 1,260 degrees Celsius is the temperature that you guys have to fire them at. Um, and that's just so that they don't break down over time with contact with water. But if you're not gonna use them for anything that's gonna have contact with water, if they're just for your tree, you absolutely don't need to fire them in a kiln. There's no need for that. Okay, cool. So. The first thing that we're going to be making is a round bauble. There are some extra things that you guys are going to need for the two pieces that we're making today. So if you want to just go and grab them now, that would be great. So the first thing, a small little tub of water so you can get a mug of water, a bowl, anything like that. Um, and the second thing, some kind of nonstick um, surface. So the easiest thing, if you guys have any, some baking paper, that works really, really well. If you have a reusable baking sheet, so I've got a silicon baking sheet, 
Um, that also obviously works really well. The only reason I suggest that is just because when we're rolling out the clay later on, sometimes it can get a bit stuck to uh, your table or to your chopping board, whatever you're using. And then that can end up tearing it and stretching it when we're trying to pick them up off the table. So that is really, really helpful. So if you guys wanna just go grab those things now, um, I'll give you a couple of seconds before I carry on. <laughs> um, Cool, so, sorry, the other thing also, I'm gonna be checking the chat box as I'm going. So if anyone wants to ask any questions or wants me to clarify something again, then just pop that in the chat box and I'll be sure to check that as I'm going. Will this be, yeah, this will be recorded Nisha. Um, so you guys can watch it again if you need afterwards. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing is the round bauble. Um, for this, I'm just gonna use uh, a tiny little handful of clay. So I've broken my clay in half and this amount of clay could probably make you maybe four baubles, something like that, depending on how small you make them. Um, if you guys wanted to just make sure that it's, you know, a bit easier for you, it's not so challenging, I would recommend using a larger amount of clay than I am, just so uh, it's not so fiddly. But I'm gonna use quite a small amount so that it's a nice small ball for the tree. Um, Right, so I'm gonna break off two little handfuls and the aim here with our two little handfuls of clay is that we wanna try and make sure that they're as similar in size as we can get them before we do anything else, just cause that's gonna make our lives really easy. Okay, um, right, so just to talk you guys through the steps of the bauble before I start, it sounds a little bit confusing and when we're doing it, it might look a bit bizarre. So I'll just clarify all the steps before we get going. The first thing we're gonna do is make two mini pinch pots. And then our two pinch pots are gonna be joined together to create a hollow round bauble. Um, when we join them together, we're gonna to blend the edges, blend the sides so that you never knew, you know, it was two, two pieces to start off with. It's just gonna look like one smooth round bauble, um, one smooth round ball of clay. And then with the air inside, that's going to mean that our bauble is a lot lighter. So when we hang it on the tree, it's not going to weigh down your branch loads. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just pop one of the pieces of clay aside and we're going to focus on the other one. Um, I'm just going to bring the camera down for a second so you guys can get a better um, shot at what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to start by rolling this into a really nice smooth ball. You can do this in your hands, but you can also do this on the table if it works easier for you guys. Um, as you're going, just check there aren't too many cracks and creases in the surface. You can just smooth those over with your fingertips. Um, okay, so once you're happy with your ball, we're then gonna turn this into a small pinch pot. So it's gonna look like a little succulent pot or essentially a, a semicircle. Um, depending on how big your ball is, we're going to make a hole in the middle and if it's smaller, I'd recommend going in with your pinky finger. If it's larger, you can just go in with your thumb. So the first thing we're going to do is just press um, our thumb into the middle. Try to make sure you're not going in at an angle. You're just going in straight. Okay, so now I've got a hole in the middle of my little ball. I'm then going to gently pinch the walls between my thumb and my fingers just really gently and I'm gonna spin it round and rotate it as I'm doing that. So that means I'm pinching all of the walls and I'm making the hole in the middle, middle bigger and wider. And as you go around, you'll start to see it's gonna take shape into a little semicircle. Um, the walls here are quite thick. So I'm gonna pinch them a bit more so that they're slightly thinner, which means that I'm gonna also have a larger bauble. And don't worry too much guys about smoothing out the other side of your um, little pot at the moment. We can get around to that later. It's fine if it looks all lumpy. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with this one. I'm gonna set that aside for a second. With the second ball of clay, our aim here is that we wanna make a pinch pot that is as similar in size to the first one as we can get it. So that might be a little bit challenging. Um, so you guys can have a go and if it's not quite right, you can just crush it back into a ball and start again as many times as you need. <laughs> That's completely fine. Um, and the reason we want them to be similar size is because 
when we join them together, if one of them is slightly larger than the other one, then it's just going to be quite difficult because one of them is sort of going to fall inside the bigger one. Um, okay, so um, as I'm going, I'm just making sure I'm pinching around the outside again. And and I'm just making sure, sorry guys, having a little technical difficulties with Zoom just right now. I think it's all sorted though. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so second pinch part, I'm just pinching around and making sure that the walls are similar thickness to the first one. Um, the most important bit here is that we get the circumference of the rim the same. So the height or the depth of the pot, that doesn't matter if they're different. We just want to try and make sure that this circle around the top is a similar size. Okay, cool. So now I've got my two little pinch pots and the next step is that we're going to join them together. So first of all, to join them together, we're going to take one of the pots and we're going to do this step to both of them. So it really doesn't matter which one you start with, guys. Just um, pick one up and get going. So we're going to pinch and gently roll the rim outwards slightly. And as you're going, the way to know that you're doing this right is that you're going to sort of make a bit of a, um, a sunflower pattern. It's going to look like you're putting some pretty petals into the rim. Also, the other thing is if you turn it upside down, it's going to look a bit like a flop, floppy bucket hat. <laughs> and that's how you know that you've got it right. And then we're going to repeat that step to the second one. So we're just going to pinch it and roll it slightly. And then... There we go, all done. So we've got two pots now. Okay, so once you guys have done this, the next thing is that we're just gonna line them up together and just spin them around and check that the rims are aligned. Um, so you'd wanna make sure that one of them isn't sort of, you know, skewed over here because then our bauble is gonna be a bit of an asymmetrical shape, but we want it to be nice and round. So the next step is that we're gonna completely blend out this seam. So we wanna try and make sure we've got a smooth surface here so that when somebody looks at it, they'll never know that it was two separate pieces. And this is gonna take a little bit of a, um, it's a gradual process, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. So don't stress if it looks a bit messy at first. Um, we're gonna keep going back over mm. it and smooth it out and it's gonna be nice and uh, round for us. So the first thing we're gonna do is literally just take your finger and in whatever direction works best for you guys, you can smooth it up or you can smooth it down. We're gonna go around and literally just drag the seam upwards or downwards so that we've moved it out of the way. And you wanna go around the whole bauble and do this. Okay, cool. So now we've got this kind of shape. It's a bit messy, but that's fine. We're going to carry on smoothing and eventually it's going to turn out really neat. So you can go back over the markings you've made now and you can smooth them out in a different direction. This uh, get, gets rid of all the ridges that you guys might have made. And then if you guys would prefer to use a tool, then I really recommend this tool in your kit. It's the knife tool, but it's the one that has a curved edge to it instead of the straight edge. Now, this tool is really good for smoothing out the surface and just bashing out all of those lumps um, that are quite difficult to get with your fingers. So all you're gonna do is just drag it across the surface like this and try and get all those uh, bumps that you couldn't move around earlier. Okay, so. At this point, guys, we don't want to be adding too much water. Um, the water we'll use in a second, just because the clay is still really moist. So it's going to be quite sticky if we add too much water and we'll end up leaving loads of fingerprints and it will just be quite hold, hard to hold on to. Okay, so now I've got a little ball that's a, a bit quirky. It's not very neat. Um, and here, there's a little bit of a hack that you guys can do to make sure that the surface is completely smooth. And if it's not a ball anymore, you can get it back to a nice round shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna get the ball on the table and I'm gonna gently roll it. Uh, make sure you're getting the top and the bottom and the middle. 
And as you roll it, guys, you're going to find that it's going to smooth out a lot more than it was before. Um, and this is where it really helps to have some kind of non-stick surface down on your table, because otherwise your clay might pick up a bit of dust from the table um, and it might start to stick a little bit, which would be quite annoying for you. Okay, so now we've got a nice round smooth ball. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do is make a little hoop to go on top. And the hoop is where you can thread through um, any string or anything that you have so that you can then hang it on your Christmas tree. So to make a hoop, I'm literally just gonna grab a tiny, tiny mat of clay a lot smaller than um, you would expect. So don't go grabbing a handful. You literally just need a small, small pinch like this. And then I'm gonna roll it in my fingers. Um, and so for the hoop, what we want is, we want it to be thinner in the middle than it is at the two ends. And because it's quite small, you can roll it on your pinky finger instead of your index finger. Okay, so, um, you wanna make sure you've twisted it so that it's uh, the right shape to attach on top and then flatten out the two ends like this. So you've got a little bridge, um, which is quite cute. Okay, so to attach the hoop onto the bauble, we're gonna use a technique which is called slipping and scoring, but it's on a really, really small scale. So we're gonna to have to make sure we're quite precise with our detail and with our score marks. Um, so scoring in pottery and ceramics refers to making small little marks and roughing up the surface of your piece so that you can then attach another piece and the uh, roughed up surface is going to help um, the two pieces stick together. So it's almost like sanding down a piece of wood to paint it. It, it creates a bit of a, um, a bit of a, yeah, a, a better surface for you to attach them. So I'm just going to take any of the wooden tools that are sharp or pointy. So you can use this one, which is the needle tool, or you can use any of the knife tools. And I'm gonna create some little marks where I'm gonna put one side of my hoop. And then I'm just gonna measure where the other side is. And I'm gonna create some more marks there. Um, and these don't have to be neat or anything because we're gonna cover them up so you won't see them. And then on the underside of my little hoop, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to add some more score marks. And then I'm going to add my slip, which for our sake today is literally just water. So you guys don't need to worry about having any, um, any special materials or anything. You literally just need to swell some water onto those score marks. And then place the handle on top of your um, little ball where you've scored it. And then we're going to smooth down the two sides. So you can smooth them down with your fingers or you can use any of the wooden tools. And you can just drag and blend the clay into the surface. Don't worry too much about the hole closing up because we can open that up in a minute. We just want to make sure that the two parts of clay are really nicely attached so that the, um, the bauble doesn't fall off the string once, once you've got it hung on the tree. Okay, cool. So now my bauble is really nicely attached. I'm gonna take my needle tool and I'm just gonna thread it through the little hole so I can open it back up again. And then you can use your finger just to blend out any of the um, messy bits that you might have created. Okay, there we go. So now I have a nice little handle there. It doesn't matter guys if um, it doesn't look perfect or neat because it's quite a rustic approach that we're going for anyway with the clay baubles. So any lumps or fingerprints that you might have actually kind of add to the overall aesthetic um, of the bauble. And then now the final thing for you guys to do before the bauble is ready to decorate is just take your sponge and you want to add a tiny bit of water onto the sponge, but because the clay is still pretty fresh, make sure you've squeezed out most of the water because we don't want to get it really, really soggy um, because then it will just take ages to dry. Okay, so I've got a bit of water on the end of my sponge and I'm just going to drag that across the surface of the bauble, which is really going to neaten it up and 
get rid of any of the final cracks or creases that we might have. And then once you've done that, your bubbles are now ready to dry. Um, if you wanted to add any finer details, so for example, if you wanted to take one of the wooden tools and carve some illustrations into the side, then I really, really recommend leaving your um, bauble to dry for about six to 12 hours before you do that. Um, and the reason I say that is just because at the moment the surface is really, really moist and almost a little bit mushy. So if you were to go in and carve any patterns, they wouldn't take very well and you'd end up having to smooth them out quite a lot. So you want the surface to be a little bit firmer so that you can draw some illustrations in. Um, but if you're just gonna leave them to dry as they are and maybe paint some decorations on, then they're completely finished now. You can just pop them aside, leave them um, somewhere. They're not gonna get crushed by kids or something. And then they're all ready to be painted and hung on your tree. Cool, so I'm now gonna move on guys to the second uh, tree decoration, which is the flat tree decoration. I'm just gonna pop this aside to dry and I'm just gonna clean up my surface a little bit because we're gonna be rolling out some clay here. Um, so we wanna make sure that there's no dry clay that I can pick up as I'm rolling out my, um, rolling out my clay. Okay, so for the next tree decorations, we're gonna be doing flat baubles. Um, so if you can imagine, if you were to roll out a sheet of cookie dough and use cookie cutters to cut out shapes, that's kind of what we're going for here. Um, so they're a lot easier. If you guys found that a little bit challenging, then don't worry. <laughs> this is a more simpler way of making Christmas tree decorations. Um, cool. So what you're going to need for this is a non-stick surface again, which can be baking paper, can be tracing paper, anything that you guys have at home. You can also use the small little bags that the clay comes in. You can pop these down on your surface if you don't have anything else because they're also non-stick. And then you're gonna need a second sheet of tracing paper, which is gonna go on top of the clay. So you want one underneath and one on top. Then the last thing that you're going to need is a rolling pin or something that resembles a rolling pin if you don't have one. So you could use a bottle of wine or a water bottle, um, <laughs> anything that you can find at home that's round and has an even surface to it. Okay, so firstly, you guys are going to want to pop down some baking paper on the table. I've got my um, silicon baking sheet here, so I'm going to miss that step. Then secondly, you want to take a small handful of clay. Okay, so I say a small handful just because if we started off with, you know, a massive lump of clay, as we roll it out thinner, it's going to grow and grow and then it's probably going to become difficult to manage. It might end up um, trailing off the end of your chopping board or off the end of the table. So we're just going to start small here and you can always roll out more if uh, you want to make more decorations. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of any little lumps and cracks at the moment, and then I'm gonna place it down on the table. Um, another thing that you guys can try if you don't have a rolling pin or a bottle of wine or anything like that, is you can literally just crush the clay flat by using the palm of your hand. Um, it's a slightly more messy approach because it won't be a very, very clean flat surface. But then once again, it suits quite well with the rustic aesthetic. So I wouldn't stress if that's the only option you guys have. But if you do have a rolling pin and some baking paper, what we're now gonna do is pop the baking paper on top of the clay and grab your rolling pin. And we're gonna start to evenly roll the clay and um, you want to make sure you're rolling it in every direction so it doesn't just turn out in one long rectangle. Every so often, uh, this is top tip guys, every so often you want to make sure you're lifting your clay off the table to check that it isn't completely stuck and then maybe moving it around a little bit which is going to help um, make sure that we don't have to peel the clay off the table at the end. Okay, so here I'm aiming to roll out the clay to about half a centimeter thick. But once again, this is up to you guys. If you wanted chunkier baubles, then you can go for a centimeter or more <laughs> if you wanted really big ones. Okay, so I'm just moving it around again. Okay, 
Okay, so my um, clay is pretty much rolled out to the perfect height and it's all pretty flat. The next thing I'm gonna do is choose in my mind a shape that I want this bubble to be. So if you guys can imagine things that are usually associated with Christmas. So for example, you could do a star, a stocking, a bell, a reindeer, a Christmas tree, a snowman, even a snowflake if you're feeling ambitious. I'm gonna to stick to something pretty simple just so that I can show you guys. Um, I don't have to be too involved <laughs> in the sketching process. And what I'm first gonna do is take my needle tool, which is the one that looks a little bit like a pencil. And I'm gonna sketch my design onto the clay. Another thing that you guys can do if you wanted to make loads and loads of uniform decorations that are all exactly the same, is you can draw out a template on a piece of card. You can cut that out and then you can use that to trace the exact same shape all over your uh, flat piece of clay. But for the sake of not wanting to grab loads of extra materials, um, I'm just gonna sketch it freehand, which also is not as difficult as you guys might think. So I'm just gonna choose a star and I'm gonna take my needle tool and I'm just gonna roughly sketch my star into the clay. And I'm not the best drawer guys, so please don't laugh <laughs> at my <laughs> funny shaped star. Okay, cool. So now we've got my star and I'm happy with it. If you guys decided that you're not so happy with the drawing that you've sketched, you can take your sponge, you can smooth it back over and fill in all the cracks and you can start again but I'm happy with this. So I'm then gonna grab my knife tool um, and you can use either of the knife tools, the flat one or the straight one. I'm gonna use the straight one just because I find it a bit easier to get into the corners with this one. And top tip, make sure that any leftover clay on your knife is scraped off just so that it doesn't get in the way when you're trying to get the finer details out of your decoration. Okay. So now I'm just gonna go back over those lines that I traced and I'm gonna make sure I'm cutting all the way through to the board. Make sure that you're joining up, um, if you lift your knife off and put it back on again, you're joining up the little holes in the corners. And then top tip for this bit, guys, don't try and lift out the shape that you've cut out. Lift off the rest of the clay, because if you lift it up and it is slightly stuck to the table, which I feel like maybe mine has a little bit of, um, you know, stickiness. So it might potentially be stuck to the table a little bit. And if you try to lift up your decoration and it is stuck to the table, then you might accidentally stretch it or tear it, which would be really annoying. So we're gonna lift off the rest of the clay. If you've rolled out a big sheet of clay and you've got lots of decorations all over the place, the best way to do this is to just draw some lines leading to the outside of the clay so that you can tear off slightly smaller parts. You don't have to tear off the whole thing at once. So as you can see, my clay is a tiny bit stuck. So I'm just gonna help myself by using one of the knives and just scraping it off. Cool, and then by doing it this way, that means I'm not ruining the shape that I've just carved. Um, and if you guys are worried about your clay being slightly stuck to the table or whatever you're using, once you've taken away all the excess clay, you can literally just leave your piece there to dry. And once it's dry, it won't be stuck anymore to the surface. Okay, there we go. So I've cleaned up all the rest of the clay. Now I've got my star shape, which at this point is still a little bit messy. So the next step is that we're gonna go in and we're gonna neaten it up. Um, so to neaten it up, you guys can use a tiny bit of water on your fingertips, but try not to add too much water. So I'm just going to dip it a tiny bit in my water and then I'm going to go on all the ridges 
and the sides, and I'm just going to smooth them over. And once you guys have gone along all the ridges and smoothed them all out, if it's still looking a little bit raggedy around the edges and it needs some neatening up, you can take the tools, the wooden tools, and you can just go back in, make sure you've removed any clay from the end and straighten them back up again. Okay, so now we have our Christmas tree decoration. And the last step is that we have to punch a hole in a place so that we can then thread a string through, which is gonna attach it to a tree. So if you're worried about your piece being stuck to the table, you can just punch the hole in and leave it there to dry. Um, I'm gonna have a look and see if I can peel mine off, which it's a little bit stuck. So I'm just gonna leave it there for a second and punch a hole in as it is. Um, so if you did a star like I did, then I recommend maybe putting the hole up in one um, top point of the star. If you put it in the middle, then it will spin around. Whereas if you put it at the top, it's gonna hang neatly. Um, similarly, if you've done a Christmas tree or any other decoration, make sure you punch your hole near the top of the decoration. So I'm just gonna place a hole in one corner and I'm gonna use the finer point of my needle, needle tool I'm going to put it in and I'm just going to swirl it around to make sure that the hole isn't tiny, made it a little bit bigger. So that will make my life easier when I'm threading the string back through. And there we go. So that is my star decoration finished. Um, so next we can do a Christmas tree decoration. Um, so I'm going to take another small handful of clay, going to make sure I've just cleaned up um, the surface a little bit so I didn't pick up any more dust. I'm going to roll out the ball and then once again make sure you've got your baking paper on top or underneath as well if you can and we're going to roll it out and check it to make sure it's not stuck again, move it around And lift it up again. This one's pretty stuck. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this one here. Um, okay, if you guys do have any cracks or like surface textures that you want to get rid of, just take your sponge and you can blur them out. And then once again, you can take your needle tool and sketch your design. So for my Christmas tree, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna give it three tiers. And a little trunk. And then once again, I'm gonna take the tool and chop it out. And then this one's a bit more difficult because you've got some tight angles in there. You wanna make sure you get right into the corners. Um, and so you can go back over it once you've cut it out and check that the, uh, the angles all jo join up so that you haven't left any clay still attached. Okay, so I've cut it out now and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make my life a bit easier, draw some lines towards the outer edge of the clay and then start to peel them off.
Um, and then if you guys wanted to carve some details or decorations or illustrations onto the surface, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's always best to leave them for a few hours, maybe six hours if you can leave them for that long um, before you carve them in, just because the surface, as it's super moist and a little bit um, mushy, will take better when it's firmer to um, details. So don't worry as well about them drying out completely if you leave them for six hours, because it will still take a couple of days for them to dry solid. So you can carry on working on them tomorrow morning if you fancy, or um, even you can carry on working on them um, in a few days or a few weeks time if you wrap them up in some cling film or put them in a reusable sandwich bag, something like that. Um, so Emily says, hi, does it shrink much when it dries? So there is very, very, very little shrinkage, but if you are, <laughs> if you are making a plant pot or something or a vase, then I wouldn't recommend making the pot around uh, another pot if that makes sense so if you were measuring the pot by using a reference pot on the inside I'd make sure you take that pot out before it dries because if there is a tiny fraction of shrinkage it might have hairline cracks in the surface or something like that um, which would obviously be quite frustrating if you make a really nice pot um, okay so if you guys want we can also make a Christmassy pot as well I can teach you guys how to make a coil pot um, so that we can do some extra stuff. Okay, so once you guys are done with your Christmas tree decoration, the only thing left to do is punch a hole in the top, um, smooth it over and leave it to dry. And then once they're all dry, you guys can paint them nice colors or you can just leave them white if you want because that's also really nice. It's sort of like a sort of a rustic look. Okay, so I'm just going to clean up my work surface and then we are going to make some coil pots, um, which is pretty quick. I'm going to teach you guys the basic principles as um, of how to make the coil pot and then it's up to you. You can make them as large as you want or you can turn them into vases by building them all the way up like this. Um, or you can even make them into bowls by stacking the coils slightly outwardly on each um, on each step up. So. I'm just gonna clean up my work surface and then we'll get started with the coil pot. Okay, so as I said earlier, a really good tip um, for using a non-stick surface is you can just use the little bags that the clay comes in. Um, so we've got a question, is it possible to make a plant pot without firing it in a kiln? Yes, it is possible to make a plant pot without firing it in a kiln. Um, if you're making a pot for a small succulent or something that doesn't require loads and loads of watering, then you don't need to fire it in a kiln. Um, if you're making a plant pot for a big plant, which is gonna require lots of water, then I recommend making sure that it fits the plastic pot inside it. Um, and that way you don't have to fire it. The sealant should be waterproofing enough. But if you don't want to put the plastic pot inside, you just want the plant pot um, with your plant inside, then I would definitely recommend getting it fired in a kiln, just because it would be a shame if it started to break down a little bit over time. Okay, so we're going to go into a coil pot, guys, now. Um, and this is a really ancient technique. Um, it's kind of like a bit of a foolproof technique as to how to make a really nice shape to a pot or a vase um, without throwing it on a pottery wheel, which you guys might have seen maybe um, in videos, which is quite difficult, really fun. If you guys wanted to give it a go, I recommend it. But this is sort of more of a hack <laughs> to get a similar shape um, without all the messiness and you know the difficulty. So to make my coil pot, I'm gonna start off making the base. Um, I'm just gonna take a small handful of clay. This is completely up to you guys. If you have a small succulent nearby um, that you wanna make a pot for, then you can just grab a small handful of clay. If you have a big plant, then you're gonna want more clay for the base. And for the base, there are a number of ways you can make it. You can roll it out flat with a rolling pin and you can trim a circle by using a bowl or a glass. But I'm just gonna use a really simple um, method. I've rolled out a ball and I'm using the palm of my hand just to squash it down um, and get a nice flat circular shape. So I'm just gonna pick it up, check it, make sure the edges are nice and rounded and smooth. If you do have any cracks, you can just go in with a tiny bit of water, 
smooth them out, um, and then you're good to go. The next step is that we're going to roll out our coils. So I would recommend starting with a really small handful of clay because otherwise, as you roll out your coil, it's going to get longer and longer as it gets thinner and it's going to trail off the edge of your table and just be a bit of a nightmare. So I'm going to start by making sure I've got nothing on the board and then rolling out my handful into a small sausage shape. Um, so rolling out coils is actually deceptively difficult because as they get longer and thinner, you're going to find they might get a little bit lumpy. And instead of rolling into a nice, smooth cylinder shape, they might start to roll out flatter on one side. And it's quite frustrating. So the best technique for this is to make sure you're rolling the coil just in your fingertips. You're not using the lumpy part of your hands and you're rolling away from you as you're going. And as you roll away, you're dragging your fingers outwardly slightly, which is gonna stretch the coil for you. So a guideline here is that you guys wanna roll your coil until it's um, just a bit thinner than the thickness of one of your fingers. Um, and try and make sure if you do get any straight edges, you've just bashed those out a little bit, made them rounder. Um, until you, before you attach them onto your base, sorry. Okay, so hopefully you guys are gonna have a nice smooth coil. Um, I would put a bit more effort into mine, but <laughs> I wanna jump ahead and show you how to attach them to the base so you guys can make sure they're nice and smooth before you do this step. So first of all, to attach them to the base, we're gonna measure them up. Um, so I've got it wrapped once around and then I'm going to trim my coil. I'm then going to blend the two ends of the coil together so it looks like one continuous loop. You can blend it with your fingers or you can use any of the wooden tools um, if you prefer. And if you feel like you really need to, you can use a little bit of water in the join to make it really nice and smooth. Okay, cool. So now I have my first uh, step of my coil pot. To attach it onto the base, I'm going to use that same technique that we talked about earlier, which is the slipping and scoring technique. So first of all, I'm going to put a few score marks into my base in the same place that my coil is going to be attached. Um, these don't have to be pretty or anything because you guys aren't going to see them once you've joined the two pieces together. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing onto my coil. Then I'm going to use a little bit of water. Um, I'm going to swirl that on top of the markings I've made. And this is going to create a bit of a paste for you guys. And that will act like an adhesive. So act um, like a glue to bind the two pieces together. Then I'm going to pop my coil on top of my base, give it a bit of a wriggle around to check that it's stuck nicely. And then I have my first step of my coil pot. So then it's up to you guys um, from here. You can build the rings ever so slightly outward and so that you can make a bit of a bowl shape or you can have them go outward and then come back in to make a vase or you can just build them straight up on top of each other which will make a plant pot or a really, really tall skinny vase. Um, Annabelle asks, do the scores have to go in opposite directions or does it not matter? Um, if you're getting really, really technical, then it will help if the scores go in the opposite directions, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference. So you guys don't have to worry about that too much if you know if you can't remember which sides they go. It's basically just to rough up the surface a bit um, to create a bit of extra stick. Okay, yeah, so then it's up to you guys to roll out as many coils as you want, stack them as tall as you want, and then once you've got all your coils stacked up, you can either leave them with the rings visible, which is really nice and it's quite a pretty look. Um, I've seen lots of people do the rings slightly smaller as they go up to create a gradient, or once their pots are dry, they paint them in a gradient, which is really pretty. Or if you wanted a really nice, smooth, professional finish, you can take any of the wooden tools to blend them. You can blend the wall completely um, into one smooth surface. And then you'll never know that you, uh, you actually designed the shape of the pot using coils. 
Okay, guys, so I would show you how to make that, but that will probably take a while and it's very repetitive. So I'm just going to say uh, <laughs> thank you so much for um, watching me in the tutorial that I've just done. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy making some Christmas decorations. And if you want to just make some plant pots, which obviously you can enjoy all year round, I hope you enjoy doing that as well. I want to say thank you so much to Anthropology for having us um, and to Jyoti for hosting. And yeah, I hope you guys really, really enjoy making your stuff. If you do have any more questions, you're welcome to pop them in the chat box or you can message us on Instagram at Sculptor and we can get back to you with any answers that we have. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Have a really good afternoon and over to Jyoti. Thank you so much, Ellie. That was super fun. And we also just want to say a massive thank you for everybody who joined in today and to those who donated to our chosen charity this month, SmartWorks. As mentioned, we'll be emailing you with any links that you might need from today, along with the link to the Vimeo recording, um, where a recording of the event will be uploaded. We've got lots of events coming up over the next month, so be sure to check out our website for more details. If we don't see you at another event, we hope you have a lovely Christmas. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>